Hello and welcome to part 14 of a series where I am building a protege head. Uh, this part is going to be a little bit different than previous parts. Uh, I have recently got a video switcher, a, a live video switcher to use to mess around with. I am going to try to produce most of this live. Uh, I have all of the camera feeds here. I have the over the shoulder, I have the desk camera, and I even have my computer plugged into this so I can just switch these live and hopefully save me some time later by not having to go through and do that. I just have to remember to switch cameras often enough while I am doing this to make it worthwhile. The audio is problematic right now. That is specifically because my lapel mic, uh, I guess I hadn't used it long enough that the battery self-discharged and it was low, so it's charging right now. I'll probably plug that in in a little bit. So that's the plan for right now. Uh, what I'm actually going to work on tonight, I'm thinking, obviously I haven't gotten started on putting the finishing touches of the outer surface on this yet. I have stuff ready to do that. I just need the time, but I don't have that time this weekend. It's already after 8 on Friday, and I'm going out for most of Saturday. Uh, so that's probably going to be a project for next weekend or later in the week, but not right now. I figure today, though, I will work on the, the capacitive touch sensor and wiring up a toggle button and the software support for the toggle button into the code because um, I, I figure they're probably going to be like up around here, maybe, I, I, I don't know, but I figure there's probably going to be some up around here, basically. and. I, and even like if you brush the contacts on the board, uh, it can trigger. I don't want that to happen like when you're putting it on or whatever. So I want there to be a physical button that you have to press to enable the capacitive touch. So that's basically what the plan is for tonight. Oh, I didn't even hook up pin headers. Probably because I wasn't sure what side I wanted them on. I think they're gonna have to be on the inward facing side. Well, let's just check that really quick. Uh, no, there's room for them to be on the outward facing side, but that might be too ugly. You know what? I've got double length pin headers. I can just put them so they're on both sides, and then that shouldn't matter. So, you know, why not? We need to basically, uh, take everything off of this so I can solder stuff to it. Hopefully I won't have to do this too many times. Oh, this one's screwed in. need to do is put some headers in along the top here for the capacitive touch and in the middle in the middle here for the external buttons so that means I need to get some components out the physical push button I believe is the only one I'm going to need At least that's the intent, is to only need one of them, so I can go with, get by with just two wires for that, so I might as well just pull two wires off for that. Uh, oh, but that's also going to be annoying to solder on, because... I will have to get onto one of these little... Keep going to that one, I know it can't focus. One of these little tiny buttons with these little tiny legs. And I don't know how I'm going to... I guess I guess I have to solder directly to that. That's going to be annoying. Uh, so I want pin headers. For the button connector, I can use, just use regular... Um, regular short um, back feed. Uh, how many is that? Is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So I need to cut or to break eight of the pins off of this connector to solder in there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then for the capacitive touch, I think it's 13. No, it's maybe. No, I think it's less than that. Is it 12? One, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six to 11. So that's 12. Is that correct? Yeah, that's 12. And I think I want to use the double length ones just because I don't know which side I want to put it on yet. So if I use this, then I'll put them on either side. And it looks like four left over. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so if I, do, if I use this and put it in like that, you can see it sticks out the other end. Okay, so I want to connect from this side instead of from this side. And then what I need to do is tin these wires, tin this connector. So I need those ones. And then try to actually get in there and... Um, connect this stuff together. Where's the end of the solder? Uh, hopefully that's good enough. Now oh, you can't really see much of anything here. Uh, maybe switch to that camera. You're probably still not going to see much of anything here, but it's not much I can do right now. It's very, very tiny stuff and I don't have an overhead camera. My GoPro does not have HDMI out, so I cannot use it with this thing. And I do not have a UVC to HDMI adapter for any of my webcams. So I only have two cameras that can do HDMI right now. So them's the brakes. All right. Now we put the heat shrink tubing over these wires before I connect them to the switch because otherwise I'll never get them on. And then hopefully we don't need any more solder. We just touch these together and hit them with the iron. Now the next order of business is uh, getting all of this soldered on. To this board, oh, onto this board. So I'm just basically just gonna lay this upside down like that and just solder onto it. I'm not quite done with the soldering because I need to solder something to some of this copper foil tape, wherever I put it. Here it is. So yeah, I've got this stuff. This is just it's just copper foil. Uh, six millimeters across. I don't know how thick it is. It's not very thick. I've got you know, Well, it was a five meter roll. I've used a little bit of it for testing as I mentioned earlier um, my plan is To just probably Along here maybe even a little bit along here, but basically just have several different zones that are able to be felt without looking. So, you know, on the side here is easy, on the side here is easy, right around that bend is easy, and then at least one in the middle, probably just one in the middle. That gives me five, and I only really need four to start with. But I'm not really gonna cut these out or anything yet or at least not attach them to the surface of the head yet until I do further testing, but I should at least get one of these out so I can start testing with it. So I'm probably going to cut uh, 
See, there's a little bit of a kink right here. You can't really tell because I don't want to focus on it. But there's a little bit of a kink right here. Yeah, you can kind of see it now. And then one down here just formed. So I'm going to try to cut near those kinks. And I guess cut two out for right now. Because again, I'm not doing... These aren't my long-term things. These are just... I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Uh, I really want this to be like I really want to be able to unplug so hopefully I sound better now because if I don't then what was the point of using this microphone over the camera's built-in microphone so I don't want to solder the wires directly to this because in the long run uh, well shoot whatever wires are actually connected to them are going to have to be just there because once the head's on they're going to be under the layer, the layer of latex on the surface, glued directly to the plastic frame. And then the wires are going to have to go back out to the inside so they can get down and around. So I think what I need to do is get some solid core wire and use that as basically my little lead that I solder onto here and then plug the wires into, I guess. I don't know, where'd I put my wire cutter, or wire strippers? Again, I don't think I'm gonna use these as my permanent solution, but just in case I do, I wanna get them long enough to be usable for that. Those should be long enough to be used as a permanent solution, just in case I do end up wanting to use these. I might have to double up the thickness of these like that put two side by side and then solder them together, but worry about that later. So for right now, all I have to do is strip both ends of this wire. It needs to be a little bit longer than that. Well, that ends fine. That can be just be the end that I solder to the copper. So the same kind of thing. I need the soldering iron turned on and ready to go. I guess I can just leave it up there. And I need to tin Tin this tape somehow and tin one end of these wires. Now, soldering to this foil might prove to be problematic because it might get really hot or like spread the. It might be a really good heat sink, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. That was easier than I thought it'd be. So I think I need to test some of this stuff now, which unfortunately means I need to put this all back together. Because I didn't take it out of the head. Uh, I take the board out of the head, so all this stuff still needs to live inside the head. Now I unplugged that cable, but that cable actually stays connected. So push you in there, get this button out of the way. I need to plug this cable in there. I need to get power in here and in here. Whoop, it's not lined up right. There we go. Now, I need to take two and go in two from the end. And I'm just gonna do it on this side for now because that's easier. Put them in on the, um, the bottom side of the board. Since I can, because I put use the double long or yeah, the double sided pin headers. It's just easier right now. Uh, turn that off. Cut back here. Uh, power supply on. Put soldering iron off. Uh, 
power supply on, USB cable to power the main board. Engage, okay. And then if I press this button, it should cancel. Uh, well, that actually doesn't do anything right now. Cool, so there's the OLED. Pressing the button, pressing any of this stuff isn't going to do anything right now because none of them are the menu button, so I need to actually press the menu button inside, which is that. And then if I press the external button, it should leave the menu, and it does. Nice. If I press the menu button and then use these, and nothing happens. Huh. It's not, ch I don't know, it is checking. Because the, the little interrupt light, you see this little red light come on? So that red light means that it has data and it goes off when it gets red. Okay, let's just double checking. Uh, did I put them on the right end? No, I put them on the right end. Those are, those are down and up, so red should be down. Auto timing out. Red should be down, but it isn't downing. That's annoying. Actually, it's not registering the red light when I touch these foil strips. Oh, that, that one is. Up is registering, down is not. And if I hit menu and then hit down, woo, and not touch the that thing, but then I touch this one, it goes up. So this one works. You can see this. there's this red light uh, that you can't see because it's another picture in picture. There you go. So you can see there's this red light flickering over here. That means that it's registering that there's a touch. Uh, it comes on when it sees there's a touch and it goes off when it gets red. So the software is reading. And also that's why the menu is staying up because I keep hitting up. It, uh, it can't go up anymore, but that's resetting the timer for the menu to close. So if I hit down in here twice, and then I can go, but, but, well, it, it kind of key repeated there. I, that might need some software to debounce the uh, capacitive touch a little bit. But anyway, this red one, which is coming off of its backing, is just not doing anything, unfortunately. And that is plugged into where it says up. And if I hit, mm, I'm trying to touch one of these to open the menu. It should be this one. Yeah, this should be the one on the end to open the menu, which also isn't opening the menu. Hmm. But it's detecting it. The light's coming on. It's detecting something. You can see the light doing its thing. But the one that's labeled menu isn't doing anything. Unless that one's actually back. No. Interesting. Let me look at the code. Where does it do the touch? I need to look in the button code. Pressed button, here we go. So, um, so we read from the IO expander, which has the buttons actually connected to it. One of the pins on it is the input from the capacitive touch to say, hey, I have a thing. Uh, and if that is set, then we read zero is back, which is actually wrong. The soak stream says that zero should be a, a menu. Okay, well, hmm, I'm going to move red over to zero. And I think I unfortunately have to power cycle this to recalibrate the 
um, capacitive touch. I, mean, I have a back button. I can just manually press that. So now this one should be menu. It's still not doing any. All oh, right, because we know it's not even. Oh no, it's detecting something on it now. So zero. No, zero is back. So according to the the code right now, channel zero is back. Channel one is menu. But if I look at the silk screen, channel zero is menu. Channel one is back. So let me just fucking make it match the silk screen. And then it goes down and then up. So all of these were just wrong. Okay, well, let's just see if flashing it makes a difference. Who knows, it might, it might not. Okay. So now, oh, menu, is that on down or is that on up? That's on up. So menu, menu, back, down, down, menu, menu menu. Okay. They're working now. Part of it was just the soak screen being wrong. Part of it was who knows. It's probably mostly the soak screen being wrong. But hey, that's cool. I have stuff that works. Uh, so that's important. Uh, before I go much further, though, I kind of want to actually demonstrate the whole plan here. And that requires me to go get something from upstairs. So as I've mentioned, bits and pieces of, I kind of want to use latex as the skin. It's actually going to be black, not red, but I, this red is just the scrap piece that I have here for, that I used previously for testing with the capacitive touch and I just folded it over. And also this isn't the same color. I'm also going to be wearing black gloves probably with this, but this is what I had handy and something that I don't need to immediately rewash. So the main test right now is uh, to validate and it should work based on the previous tests that I did with uh, just folding this over into a double layer. But if I take gloved hand and I take, well, first of all, does just the gloved hand work? And if I use my gloved hand, can you even see what I'm doing over here? Kind of. Not really. If I go in here and go boom. Okay, it worked. So that worked. Uh, you should be able to see it on the picture in picture, I think. So this is working with the gloved hand. Cool. And then if I take a sheet of latex and basically cover that. It works with my finger alone, but does it work? It does. So this, this is, this is my genius idea right here is, um, being able to control this capacitive touch while I'm wearing whatever gloves I'm going to be wearing through the skin that I put over the top of it. And since I just proved that this works just by doing that, that's really cool. And I, can, I don't have a way to go up, but I can re, uh, reselect all of these things. So that's really neat. Oh, I get, it even restarts the animation if I hit it again. That's, that's amusing. So, good. That validates my entire plan so far. So the next order of business is modify the code a little bit to uh, 
make it so this doesn't happen until a button is pressed and to display that toggle. And that's actually more difficult than I was considering originally because the hardware doesn't have a way to say, hey, I want these status lines on the screen. So I'm gonna have to add that first. I probably can just add something to the driver that says, give me a status line. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, input for, give me input for uh, picture in picture. I always leave the picture in picture on, it doesn't hurt anything. I still have nobody in here with me, Sag. At least I don't think I have anybody in here with me. Well, still one viewer, which is probably me. All right, um, so I need to come to the main software here and I need to go to the definition of a driver, which is probably in here. Oh, I guess it's in the rain file. Uh, yeah, here, no, that, that's the main thing. Yeah, here we go, driver interface, okay. So this, I need to basically just have be my, uh, well, let's, let's go back to this for a moment. And long term, because this is nowhere near done, but long term, I'm going to want probably the first line to stay approximately as it is. I might not need the memory count there, especially because it goes so goddamn fast. But I definitely want the time. I definitely want the frame rate. I don't need the date. I don't, I, it doesn't make sense to have the date on here. Presumably you don't care or you know what day it is. The next line is the boop sensor, which isn't even installed anymore because I knew it didn't work through the, the, uh, the, the visor. I do have another different one uh, that I even have on a little 3D printed, ugh, 3D printed, there, there. I have a different sensor in a 3D printed bracket that fits directly into the front of this. I need to sand it down a little bit to make it fit more nicely. But um, I haven't even started writing code for this. This works di more differently. And obviously because somebody has a bracket for it, it presumably should work through a tinted visor. But I'm not worrying about that yet. That's low priority. We have the boop sensor and then we have the accelerometer axes. As you can see, those numbers kind of change yeah, that first one is getting closer to zero as I tilt it back. Haven't done anything with those yet, but I'm just gonna leave those there for now. And I believe we have room for two more lines of text before we get to the mirror of the display. Uh, I'm probably going to want to have, like go to Gen itself use one of those lines. So I can use one line for hardware driver feedback. So anything coming from the specific stuff to this implementation of the hardware, including um, this toggle button for the capacitive touch, because the main program has no idea that there's a capacitive touch here. It just sees button inputs. Status line string. God, it's getting late. I don't want to go too much longer. I've been, I've been recording for an hour and a half already and on air for almost two. So let's try to wrap this up by the end of the hour, at least for the night. So status line, uh, status line blinking, impossible in, without thinking. You are likely to be eaten by a group. Uh, anyway, DMCA, right? I don't think a front a lot would care though. So I need to add that sure it does. I guess I want to add a bool up here. Uh, touch enabled bool. If D 
d.touch enabled s on oops um return touch plus f. actually return touch on on return touch off and I don't need that and these are just consts and hopefully that helps a bit and then uh, I need to move this button to somewhere else which I need to kill power I'm just gonna turn that off so I kill the power entirely so the extra three is the one right next to the ground lead. So which end is it? This end. Okay, move that one to here. So now I'm on extra three, which is an X that doesn't even exist on the board. Extra one and two exist on the board as unpopulated, but extra three does not, which is fine because I'd never want it on the board anyway. So that works out. Um, but now we want to go to uh, button, uh, wait. Uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea, but I'm not doing that yet. Um, press the button, here we go. So, not I dot pin. Seven, so six, I need consts for these per or equals one, right shift, go to it. There, need. IO back equals IOTA. IO menu, IO up, IO down, IO extra one, IO extra, to IO toggle touch IO touch event. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, touch channels are different too. Oh god, the touch channels don't match the other channels, really? I fucked that up? Man, that's menu, but... Oh, I, I have another fucking board right here. I don't know why I'm craning my neck to read from that when I have another PCB right here I can just look at. Alright, did I fuck this up? So, back, menu, menu, back, up, down, down, up. God damn, wow. I, I actually did that the stupid when I laid these this board out. Um, yeah, there's no excuse for me having done that, but that's what I did, and that's what the silk screen says, so that's what it's going to be for right now. That's annoying. If I ever make another rev, I should fix that. Touch. So what's the order that it is? Menu back down up. Menu. Touch back. Touch down. Touch up. IO up. IO down. IO back. IO menu. I-O up, I-O down, I-O back, I-O menu. These all obviously need to be the same. Okay, um, toggle touch, 
then if down here, if cur and one right left shift IO toggle touch greater than zero D dot touch enabled equals not D dot touch enabled. Okay. Now I need to come over here and uh, update status idle, idle, here we go, idle, draw idle status. E dot status text dot set line three D dot, no, G dot D driver dot status line is that it is that it fuck it yo let's flash it and see if that's it how's that touch off and then this shouldn't do anything i'm not actually using that for anything i just realized uh yeah this uh Oops, uh, oh no, it's already on there. Else if D dot touch enabled. So I always want to read the touch status to clear the pending event on the touch thing. So if you touch all the things and then press the button to turn it on, they don't all fire. Yeah, so I need to do that. And then I need to reprogram it again. I knew there was something else we're getting to do. So touch off. Now these are doing nothing as they should do nothing. Okay, so it's going crazy. And then if I press this button, touch on, touch off, touch on. Touch that, hey, look at that. And then it can go through the menu. Why did that double tap, but whatever. And I can even turn touch on and off while the menu is active. Now you obviously won't see it on the screen, but now it says touch off because I had turned it off. So if I do pressing, turn it on, boom. Nice. Uh, and then I can just back out of here, uh, go. Go to that and then go to slide. Ha ha! That good old animation. And then if I back. No, oh, that's many. And then if I back out, then I can turn touch off. And then I can touch this at will and nothing happens. Nice, 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 nice noise. Uh, clearly animating this entire screen still slows way down because that's only 30 fr 38 frames. So that's not amazing, but oh well. I'm also not using the optimizer yet. So this is cool. This actually, I actually accomplished what I set out to do today, which was add a button to toggle the t capacitive touch and validate that my idea is going to work with multiple layers of latex, which I'd already done, but I hadn't actually done it with a glove. The only thing missing now is I only did up two of the capacitive touch things. And yeah, this is cool. But um, I think, uh, there, that's the one I wanted to do. <laughs> I need to remember which camera is which on this, uh, this thing. God, this thing is super cool. I love this fucking switcher. Uh, I'll probably do another quick play around with this after the outro, so stick around if you want to see more stuff that I can do with this switcher. So I accomplished what I set out to do today. We put headers on the board for the capacitive touch and for the external buttons. We hooked up a single button to that external button header. We made a couple proof of concept little things for the capacitive touch and plugged those in. Did some debugging on the, the silk screen not matching what the code was doing, so fixing that. 
Uh, added support for a button to toggle the capacitive touch on and off. So when you're putting the thing on, you can just, you don't have to worry about accidentally touching stuff and ruining your settings or whatever. Or also if you don't want people, you know, messing with you, you can just press the button to turn it off. And, uh, we validated or I, and I demonstrated how my plan for this in the long run is so wearing latex glove on my hand, having the capacitive touch under latex skin on the head, how those two layers of latex still work to trigger the capacitive touch. Thanks for watching. If this is cool, stick around, subscribe, hit the playlist. I, I toot on my Mastodon account every time I put up a video or stream this stuff. So go, go there uh, as well. Follow me there, furry.engineer slash at Elbrar. But um, anyway, that's all I have right now. Uh, thanks for watching and come back again.